What up JKG, so today I'll be showing you the basics of PC gaming and building your own PC at a very affordable price. So today, um, overall, everything you see here, you can roughly get all this under around two grand. Um, I know that might be very expensive for some of y'all out there, but this stuff you build over time, it's nothing that you will drop instantly unless you have the money to do it. But yes, uh, over time, don't be, uh, don't be, don't rush into building a PC. Take your time, find the right prices, and you can build a PC that's runs games a lot better than consoles. So first off, the most important thing to have is a motherboard. A motherboard is a giant chip or giant, I don't know what you call it, board. It pretty much connects all your devices together. I'm gonna keep this super simple for all you guys that are new to this PC world and I won't go too techy so I won't try to confuse you all. The majority of them will look like this. They'll have pretty much a bunch of ports which is pretty much things you plug in to connect all your devices together. Next, we move on to processor. Everything relies on, on the processor. It's how fast your computer runs in a way, and how fast things can be uh, processed. That's why it's called a processor. A couple of processors out there, the main ones you probably heard of was Intel, and the other one is AMD. Uh, both work perfectly. They're both the same almost in a way. The difference is that either you prefer Intel or you prefer AMD and certain devices only can run on AMD or Intel. So make sure, read the descriptions of the product that you are buying, it will help you because you don't want to buy the wrong parts and it won't be compatible, right? So next is the, uh, the processor cooler. Usually when you buy a PC or when you buy a processor, it usually comes with a cooling fan. And pretty much it will look like this thing right here. It comes with most processors you buy unless you buy one of those like computer enthusiast processors. Um, but majority of stuff you do buy out of the market um, will come with these guys. It's default that they'll come with these little fans um, that pretty much attach to the processor. The processor is pretty much a little square that attaches to the motherboard and this attached on top to your processor. It keeps it cool to its best, but you, if you wanna do high video editing or like high processings for gaming, um, you might want to switch your cooling device, um, which I did here. The Hydro Series, um, it's liquid cooling, or you call it a radiator. So a radiator is something you can find in your car. Almost works exactly the same way. It pretty much attached to your processor here, and has a liquid cooling um, flow. And the power supply for it is the same thing. It's a CPU fan power supply, just like this one, to keep the liquid cool. So pretty much the liquid goes up in here, into the radiator, fan blows, cools liquid down, and it flows right back into here and it keeps everything contact. And next you have you know your typical CD drive. You guys know what a CD drive is, right? You guys still use CD drives? It's like a disc and you put information on it. Damn, I feel old. It's not that old. I used to have fucking floppy disk. Uh, CD drives, it pretty much is a CD. You fucking put a CD in here and it reads and what it needs is a STA power supply and SATA data. There's two cables. That also applies to your hard drives here. So let's move to your hard drives. I'm currently running two solid state hard drives. One is a one terabyte, and the other one is a 250. Both are Samsung 840 Evos. The difference between having an SSD drive and a hard drive itself is that there's no moving parts, like I said, and these guys have moving parts. It's pretty much a disc that has a needle in it. It reads it like this. Imagine being shaken or anything, it might damage your data and also that the lifespan of these guys are not that long. So, I always prefer you guys, you guys do build a PC or laptop or any computer device, use SSD drives or flash drives. Yeah, flash drives, is that what Matt calls it now? Flash drives are not called SD drives. Anyways, next on the motherboard is the RAM. What RAM is is a random access memory device and it helps you read and write data at a certain speed or it matches up to speed. So when data is transferred back and forth, it tries to match it up. So make sure you do have the same type of RAM. So make sure all RAM sticks are the same or from the same company and also put out the same amount of power because you don't want to switch it up. It might cause some problems, okay? Next, we move on to the video card. Originally, I had a GeForce GTX 560. This is probably the overclocked version. I don't exactly remember which one it is. It's been a while. These guys can roughly go around from 75 bucks to 100 something these days. Depending on the model you buy, it can range up to 500 bucks but those are like the TI super clock versions. You can do your research. But over time, I did switch it out. Currently, I'm running an Asus GTX 970. Uh, when I first saw the series, I fell in love with it instantly because of the product design and the packaging. What's cool about this is that Asus pretty much took the GPU graphics card from Nvidia and added their twist to it. The airflow and the heat absorption of the card is pretty amazing. It cuts down the temperature of the graphics cards by a lot. And also that it comes with a tweaker. You can download it on their website and it helps you adjust the fan speed and all sorts of other 
fun stuff that you can do to the graphics card. You can overclock it. I won't get too in depth with that stuff because that's a completely different topic. Anyways, moving on. Since the graphics card slash video cards or GPUs get really hot, it's very important to have good airflow within your computer. A lot of people do run liquid cooling and water cooling too, but that's a different subject. If you're planning to save more money, just buy the fans. Make sure you do have a good airflow going through and out of your computer um, because you don't want your products and devices to overheat. Currently, I have about six fans in here, I believe. No, I have five fans, actually. And I keep my rig open like this. Um, it rarely gets dusty. It's always clean like this. I know I'm a pretty clean, from, I'm a neat freak. Next, we move on to the power supply. So make sure you buy a power supply that does fit within your rig. And not only that, it does put out enough power to power all your devices. That's what the power supply is. Straightforward. That's as simple as can keep it. And that's that. I'm currently running a 700 watt um, from Aza. It's pretty old. That's why I'm upgrading this, this computer soon. Anyways, moving on to all the exterior devices I have. This is a Logitech G105 keyboard. It's a gaming keyboard. It's one of the cheapest ones you can get from Logitech. I love it. It's not too fancy. It's not too expensive. It's a good universal keyboard for almost anything you do. Um, it is compatible for Mac and for Windows. Next is my Logitech gaming mouse, the G502. This is compatible with Mac and Windows. It's a great alternative for editing as well. If you guys don't like the trackpad on Mac, you can customize all the buttons you need. Also, you can also switch the weights and add weights to this mouse. It comes with, oops, sorry. Each little weight is about 3.6 grams. Um, not much of a difference to my preferences, but a lot of people are pretty picky and sensitive with the weights of their mouse, so you can adjust that for y'all. So this is the Xbox 360 wireless receiver. What it does is it links up your Xbox 360 controller to your computer. There are a lot of games on PC that are compatible with this controller as long as you have the receiver and a wireless controller. I don't like running any fancy headsets. I currently have a Sony MDR-1R headphones. I'm a huge fan of Sony headphones. Um, I always have been. I prefer them over any other headphones. And that's it, that's it. This is the little guy here. Next is a desk microphone. I had this guy since I was in middle school, super old. It never failed on me, it sounds perfect. Um, this is a, what is this, Lab Tech? I got this for 20 bucks now. Logitech has one too, I think it's about 40 something dollars. I don't remember exactly. Um, the links will be in the description box below for all these products. Next we have our customized external drives. This enclosure is from Otherworld Computering. Um, it runs roughly around, I think, 40 to 50 bucks. And then you buy your 2.5 inch hard drives or solid state drives and you stick it right in here, plug and play. That's all you gotta do. They have never failed on me. I use them to edit off of and also transfer footage. Um, you've probably seen, the, I probably talked about this in What's In My Bag on Just King Party. Or if you guys are wondering what I use to record video games on, I use NVIDIA's Shadowplay. Um, so make sure your video cards do have that option for you to, uh, to do recording. And recording to one of these guys is perfect. It writes pretty fast. It's USB and Firewire. A lot of other people will recommend to have these guys plugged in directly inside your computer to the, the SATA cables. But, eh. It doesn't matter. Finally, moving on to the NVIDIA Shield tablet. So what I love about this device is that I'm able to synchronize this with my computer. So say that if I do want to play the game on the other side of the house, I can. Um, say that I want to play Call of Duty, I can pretty much stream from this computer to this device and play right here. So make sure there's a couple games that don't work, so make sure it does synchronize. The NVIDIA Shield tablet also comes with its own games as well, so check it out. Besides gaming on this device, I do love streaming Netflix or an HBO on here, watching Game of Thrones or any other favorite shows I do have that I don't get on TV. It's a very convenient tablet. Um, I'm also able to share portfolios and projects I've worked on, so let's say that I walk into a meeting and stuff like that. It is freaking amazing. For example, you see all here, I have a couple games here. I rarely play games on here, but for the people that do like to play games on the go, it's a great device for you. And it also comes with the Infinity Shield controller. You can also link up a headset to this controller and play that way as well. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll link all the products I have here in the description box below so you guys can check it out. And I hope this kind of gave you a like a one-on-one crash course on, I guess, computer device and also sharing my stuff with you guys. Um, next, I'll be building a new computer. So stay tuned guys, I'll probably post that around next Sunday. I know this is a pretty late video, I promise I'm, I said I'll upload this on Sunday, but I couldn't. If you guys have any questions or concerns, leave a comment below, and I'll do my best to answer it to my abilities. And stay tuned next time guys, peace. I don't know if I can take it, honestly. Believe, believe, believe you, Shotsky! Ah! <laughs>
Oh, 